Hey kids, this is Mr. Rank here. This is uh, day 28. Here's your lesson for today. Um, this is for le lesson or day 28, which is tomorrow. Um, but this is supposed to be done for homework. So take a moment right now and pause the video. Make sure in your notes you have day 28 and then the title of the lesson. And then the objective is multiply complex numbers. Okay, you should have paused the video. Um, and. I should have rewound this a little bit so you can see what's going. Sorry about that. <clears throat> okay, so today your objective is that you're going to multiply complex numbers. Um, we've learned how to work with them, um, creating a real part and a, an imaginary part, and then you also learn how to add and subtract them, just combining like terms. Today we're going to learn how to multiply complex numbers, and it's just like anything else you've learned before. Um, but just as a quick review, when we have, you know, square root of the negative 4, right, we can take that negative sign and turn it into i squared, right? And then the 4 we bring down, and then the square root of i squared is just i, and then the square root of 4 is 2. So we're making an imaginary number. And then we can write it as a complex number by saying 0 plus 2i, okay? So that's the first part that we already know. I'll box it answer so you remember that, all right? Um, now let's just say we had the square root of 4, right? And it's positive 4, okay? So what's the square root of 4? You know it's 2, right? But we also think about it as negative 2, okay? So square root of 4 is 2, right? But why is it negative 2? Why is it that way? Well, let me show you why, okay? So... This is going to be a little theoretical, and this is the big idea. If you understand the big idea, then you should be fine today. So why does it work? Well, let's see. Well, we could say that positive 4, or the square root of positive 4, we could rewrite it like this. Wouldn't it be equal to a negative times a negative times 4? Right? You see how I changed this positive sign to negative times a negative? Okay, right, because negative times a negative is positive, right? So, and just like before, a negative sign I could change into i squared times i squared times, and then we bring down the 4, okay? So, just like before, you know, what's the square root of i squared? It's just i, so that cancels that out, right? And then the square root of i squared again is i so that cancels that out, right? Let me use the orange there. And then the square root of 2 is going to be, or 4 is going to be 2, right? So I'll put that in the front so it's easy to think about. So this is really like saying 2i squared. And then remember what i squared originally m meant? Well, look at it. Whenever we saw i squared, we really thought of it as a negative sign, right? You see how we change this negative to i squared? Well, the opposite is also true. So we could say that this is like saying negative 2, right? And that's how we get the negative square root. So the big idea is that the i squareds matter. So let's go to the next slide. Here are your steps. Start writing them down. Um, but for today, you're going to be multiplying like polynomials. And then if i exists, then identify the exponent. And then the next thing you're going to do is divide the exponent by the imaginary number by 4 and the, find the remainder. And then use the remainder to apply these rules. So like if it's i to the first, if that's your answer, that's your remainder, then it's going to be just i is there. i squared is equal to negative 1. i to the third is equal to negative 1. i to the fourth is like saying i squared times i squared, which is negative 1 times negative 1, which is positive 1. And of course, we simplify. So take a moment to pause the video here. Okay, you should have paused the video and written these down. So we're going to move on. Here we go, numbers 1 and 2. Okay, so I know this is freaking out. Just pretend i is just like any normal, you know, variable. So... Number one, we got 10 times the quantity of negative 9 minus 11i. So I'm going to multiply. 10 times negative 9 is negative 90. 10 times negative 11i is negative 110i. 
Now, can I combine like terms here? No, this is a constant, right? And this is our real number, and that's in the right place. And then we got negative 110 i is an imaginary number. I can't simplify that. It's i to the first, so we are done. So the answer is negative 90 minus 110 i. That's your answer, okay? That's number one. All right, number two. This one is like foiling. So we're going to distribute each of the first terms into to the subsequent terms. So that's the big idea here, okay? So here we go. We got negative 3. Negative 3 times positive 1 is going to be negative 3. Then we got negative 3 times positive 3i is going to be negative 9i. And then we got positive 4i times 1 is positive 4i. And then we got positive 4i times positive 3i is positive 3i squared. Okay, so now we could start combining like terms. I could combine the negative 9i plus 4i. That's going to be positive, or I'm sorry, negative 5i. Then we bring down the negative 3. And then we got this uh, i squared here. You see that? So that i squared is like saying it's a negative sign. So what's negative times positive 3? Well, that's negative 3. Okay? Kind of weird. If you think about it this way, what's another way? I'm going to move this term to the side so you understand it, okay? So this is 3i squared. It's a little side problem so you understand it. i squared, remember, is equal to a negative sign, right? And then we have a positive 3. So what's positive 3 times a negative sign? Well, that's negative 3. Okay? So think of i squared as a negative sign. Just like we originally thought of negative 4 in the square root, we could take the negative sign and make it i squared. Okay? Anyways, that's just a side problem. That's just so you know, so don't worry about that. Okay, so that's what we did right here. Back to the problem. Okay, that's what I did. Then I'm going to uh, combine like terms. We've got negative 3 minus 3 is negative 6 minus 5i. Box your answer, and we are done, right? It's We have the real number right here and we have the um, imaginary number right here. Okay, so let's um, take a moment, let's pause the video and let's write this down in our notes. Okay, so we should have written this down in our notes. We're gonna move on here. Number three, okay. So I'll start us off and you finish it up. So we're gonna write down, we, we see that it says negative 11 i squared. Okay, so we could look at it two ways. We could say that we could distribute this 2 into each of these terms, or another way you could do this is just say it's negative 11i times negative 11i. So take a moment, pause the video, and try this out. Sorry about that. Okay, so you should have worked this out. This is what you should have had. We have negative 11 times negative 11 is going to be positive 121. And then we got i times i is i squared. Remember, i squared is equal to a negative, so it's like saying 121 times a negative sign. And this is positive 121. Positive 121 times a negative sign is negative 121. That's your answer. It just becomes a real number. I know, it's kind of weird, but we'll talk about this more as we move on. All right, number four. Number four, so we got seven times one plus seven i. Take a moment to pause the video here and try this problem out on your own. Okay, you should have paused the video here, so and you should have worked it out. So here we go. So this is what I would have done. We got seven times the quantity of one plus seven i. You got seven times one is seven. 7 times positive 7i is positive 49i. Okay? And i, I can't, I can't simplify this i at all. And this is our imaginary part, and then this is our real part. It's all in order, so it looks good. Nothing else I could do. That was easy. Woot woot. Okay, here we go. Number 5. Okay, so number 5. Let's start this one off together. So take a moment to write the problem down. I'll give you about 10 seconds.
Okay, so here we go. So you see, this is like number two. We're going to multiply across. So we got we want to distribute each of these across. You see, we call it foiling back in the day. I don't want you to call it foiling because we're going to do harder problems. So, anyways, take the first term, multiply with the first term in the second binomial. So we have negative eight. We got negative eight times two i is negative sixteen i. Then we got two i times one is positive two i. And then positive two i times positive two i is positive four i squared. Okay. So I'm gonna keep going here along with you. What can you combine? That's right, we could combine these two terms. Okay, so negative sixteen i plus two i is negative 14i okay bring down the negative 8 and then what do you notice about the i squared here what can that turn into that's right it's a negative sign so what's a negative sign times 4 positive 4 it is negative 4 okay finish up my problem take a moment I'll give you about 10 seconds Okay, what's negative 8 minus 4? Negative 12 minus 14i. Okay, that's your answer. Kind of weird, right? You have this big complicated problem that we're starting with, and then we simplify to that. Okay, here we go. Last one, number 6. You're going to do this one on your own all the way through, so please pause the video and do it. Okay, here we go. So this you're checking your work now. You should have done this by yourself. This is what I would do. Negative 7 times negative 7 is positive 49. Negative 7 times negative 6i is positive 42i. Okay, continuing on here. Negative i times negative 7 is positive 56i. And then we've got negative 8i times negative 6i is positive 48i squared, okay? So now we're going to combine like terms. We got these 42i plus 56i, so that's like saying um, this is going to combine like terms to become 40, I'm sorry, 40, what am I talking about? 98i, okay? Then we want to think about what are we going to do with this i squared. It's going to become a negative, right? So negative times positive 48 is negative 48. And then we have 49 at the beginning. And by the way, this is supposed to be a positive 98i, right? Because this is when we combine like terms, it's going to be positive 98. OK, then we combine like terms again, 49 minus 48. Right? These are both constants. Those are, it's going to be just one, right? And that is, I'm going to put it at the beginning because I know that's my real number now. And bring down my imaginary part. And now I have my complex number. Okay? Pretty cool, pretty snazzy. Right? Not too hard. So the big idea here is remember when we have i, it's equal to i, i squared is equal to a negative sign or negative one i to the third is like saying i squared times i, right? Which is like, if we put that, this is like saying a negative sign times i, which is just equal to negative i. And then i to the fourth, which you do deal with a lot, you just don't realize it. It's just like saying i squared times i squared, which is like saying a negative sign or a negative one negative sign times a negative sign which is equal to a positive sign and then that's it okay and they repeat themselves if you think about it i to the fir fifth is like saying i to the first times i to the fourth which is equal to what a negative sign times a positive sign or i'm sorry a negative one i i'm sorry i times a positive sign which is equal to positive i Right? And you see how that's the same answer as we have up here? Or i to the fifth, sixth is going to be equal to i squared times i to the fourth, 
which is like saying a negative sign times a positive sign, which is equal just to a negative sign. You see how this answer is the same as the second answer up here, and that this answer right here is the same as this one up here. So what do you think is going to happen when I put i to the seventh? Let's try that out. Isn't that like saying i to the third times i to the fourth? And that i to the third we know is like saying, we already know i to the third is like saying negative i here, right? And then i to the fourth is positive, so it's like really saying it's equal to negative i, right? And of course i to the eighth is equal to i to the fourth times i to the fourth, which is equal to just a positive sign, right? Two positive signs. Anyways, there's a pattern there. I hope you're seeing that. All right, so we usually do closure in class, but right now just think about what you learn. That way, you know, the reason why is it's important to think about what you learn and how we do that. Um, how does this fit in math? The reason why it's important to know that is so that you could reflect on what you learned and um, be able to remember it. It's super important to remember it. So um, we don't want you to just look at these lessons and then forget. Okay, so continuing. Here we go. We got, oh, darn it. We got eight prompts, but the last one got cut up. So sorry about that. So please do these uh, seven problems. There you go. Seven's a good number. I love seven. Take a moment. Please pause the video and work on these. And I'm going to show you the answers. Please do not look at the answers until you do the problems, okay? All right. You should have paused the video and worked on all of the answers. Here we go. Check your work. So these are your answers. Um, if you want to do number eight, it's there, but the answer's there. Anyways, check your work. If you have questions, uh, please come talk to me, and we'll work on these some more tomorrow, okay? Thank you so much. You kids are great. All right. Bye.